Michael Allen is, yes, he is an architect and he also has his own firm. Not only that, but he served on numerous different boards from the Board of Visitors for Clemson University to uh, being a board member of South Carolina Chamber of Commerce. He's also currently a Liberty Fellow, which is a very high level of leadership and very well respected in South Carolina and throughout the state. He's also a member of the Clemson uh, um, Black Alumni Association as well. So I'm not going to keep on rattling. I'm going to move out the way. Please make sure that you give him your undivided attention. So let's give a warm welcome and snaps to Mr. Michael Allen. Thank you, Julian. I, my money goes well. Um, you did a great job. I appreciate it. Uh, I want to start by introducing myself. I'm going to go in, into uh, uh, my history, and then I have some nuggets that I want to give to you. I am a South Carolina born and raised, born and raised in Conway, South Carolina, a Horry County boy. And I was fortunate enough, enough to have an athletic ability that was God given. And that athletic ability took me from knowing that I came from a background with an, in a single mom, with a single mom home, raising three kids and me being the middle child. And I want you to know all y'all middle children out there, it's a real thing. It is a real thing to have middle child syndrome. And I, I overcame that and I still deal with some of it. So um, one of the things that I learned from my athletic ability is that I was able to get a full scholarship anywhere in the country that I wanted to. And what I was able to do was research colleges and universities to understand where I want to go. And it was hard, you know, I'm coming from a household with a mom who was just happy enough that I was able to get a scholarship and not really understanding what came with that and what that meant. And I had to make a decision. And how do I make that decision? I ended up looking at all the universities and colleges that had um, architecture programs. I decided that I wanted to be an architect, didn't know an architect, uh, didn't know what exactly what they did, but I knew that I was an artist. And how do I use my artistic ability and have a career? And so I ended up choosing Clemson University and Clemson University was a great choice, had a great football program that year that I was making my decision. Uh, and it made a big impact on me about the people were on the campus at that time. And so I ended up choosing Clemson University, choosing architecture as my major. And I'm going to talk about some of the, the issues that I had through my career starting from college. Um, but let me go through and explain how I did it. It was tough. It was very tough. Uh, my coach actually called me into the office. This is my junior year. I'm doing good in, in school. I'm starting on the football team. And my coach calls me in and says, hey, Michael, you're doing great. Um, you're doing good on the field. But I need to choose between architecture and football. Because you have to understand that being an athlete at a university like Clemson, that Athletics means a lot to the university. And if you're on a full scholarship, that your time is very crucial to what you're getting your scholarship for. And as a young man, 19, 20 years old, didn't know how to handle that when you have a coach that is a grown person that you respect and asking you to make a decision between your dreams, both of your dreams. I love football. I love architecture. At this point in my junior year, I'm still in architecture. So I understand that I'm in this for life. And so I took that to heart and I kind of built that into myself as a little bit of anger um, and a little bit of um, frustrations, but it also allowed me to use it as fuel to get through the rest of the, my two years. So I ended up going to summer school every year to do my workouts and to complete my summer class, all my design classes during the summer in order to help me 
uh, get a degree in three and a half. Um, and if you don't understand, architecture is one of the only degrees that have, I think at that time it was 122 hours to graduate. And most people don't graduate in, uh, within three years. They are, typical is about five to six years, just the undergraduate program. So me going through that program in three and a half years really um, was part of that fuel that I took from my coach telling me that. So I ended up finishing my degree. I was on the draft board because if you look at old paper, I was a pretty good athlete and I was excited about the opportunity to be able to play in the NFL and being able to get uh, several agents and work with me to get in front of some NFL teams. I had some great conversation, uh, sat down, watched the draft, whole three days of the draft and didn't hear my name come up. Uh, was very disappointing to me and, and hurtful because I worked so hard and took all this fuel that I had inside of me and, and trying to pursue a dream that a lot of athletes have of making it to that level. One thing I always didn't understand is that everything that I want wasn't for me. I did not see that what was for me. So I pursued football further. So I ended up firing my agent and hiring a new agent and getting into instantly getting into arena football. And about three months after I signed with my agent, I actually got a, a contract deal in up in um, Des Moines, Iowa. Take that back. I went to Grand Rapids first. And so at this time, as a lot of athletes do after graduation, they buy cars, stuff with, you know, they know they're going into the league or they are. And so I'm trying to be very fruitful with knowing this is not a great time to make a big, didn't really get drafted, um, but I still have the opportunity to work out. So I went out and brought me a brand new Honda Accord, fresh off the lot, only 30 miles on the dash. I was, you know, I thought I was doing something at that time because I, I said, it's not a very expensive car. And if I get a signing bonus, I can go ahead and pay my car off. And this Honda was probably last me for the rest of my life. So in this, with this Honda, this is a great part of my story is this Honda actually took me everywhere I needed to go. So when I got the call to go to Grand Rapids, I jumped into the car and I drive all the way from Sumter, South Carolina to Grand Rapids, Michigan to start my camp there. Camp lasts about two months. Um, towards the end of the camp, I'm in the hotel room with my roommate is the starting quarterback. And we're just relaxing from a day of working out. And I get a call down to the lobby and I, the coach is there and he hands me a envelope and says, Michael, it was great having you on the team. Uh, you're a great athlete. And anytime you want to work out with anybody else, please use me at a, as a reference. You, your speed, your abilities are uh, far beyond a lot of athletes I've seen. Here is your final paycheck. And, and thank you. And uh, please stay in touch. When I talk about fuel, Getting cut from a team, my first team, when you grew up, always being the athlete, always being the fastest on the team, always being a top athlete, and then getting released from a team, that hurt deeply. And not only that, one of the things that I went through during that camp is I was actually being used as an example during camp video sessions and showing what to do and how to do techniques. And so getting this release really hurt me. So what I did is I go back up to my room, quarterback sitting on the bed, looking at TV. I'm packing my bags furious. I still have the check though. Throw the check in the bag, throw all my stuff in the bag. And then I just jump into this Honda. Reverse out the parking lot and I'm speeding. Now, I'm so mad that I did not realize this. It was a blizzard at the time. And I've never seen snow like this. I'm coming from South Carolina, and this snow was literally going sideways. 
And I am just so mad. I drive for about an hour and a half until I realize that I'm driving now I'm driving behind a snow truck that's going way slower than I need to be going because I'm furious. But it clicks to me at a point that I'm driving angry and I need to pull over because this is dangerous. So I pull over, get a hotel room. More By morning time, calm down, call my agent, and he gets me into Greenville Rhinos team. And so I finish my trip, get the Greenville Rhinos, uh, work out, practice. I'm on the team there. Now, second thing that happens, I get on the Greenville Rhinos team, starting quarterback, I mean, starting quarterback and corner, and in being cut from this team. Now, this team was, I was uh, the name on the team because Clemson University and the distance between Clemson and my, my time between when I played at Clemson and versus now, people still knew me. So when I came out the gate, every, it was a lot of people that still knew me. So I had this routine that I did with the mascot that when I came out and me and him did these things with our hands and jumped around, and it was exciting time, the crowd trying to make the crowd go crazy because, it, you know, in professional, it's a little entertaining. So I wanted to be a little entertaining. Had this whole thing down. After the first few games, the coach started sitting me down, which was kind of irritating me. Um, and I didn't understand it. So I ended up finding out that he was trying to just use me at the beginning of the season and then ended up putting his players from his former team on the starting roster. So by the last game, right before the playoffs, we get out and I haven't played a, a, a snap yet in the game. And I'm at court and it's like, you know, about 10 seconds left in the game. And the other team is going in to drive for a touchdown. Um, the man said, hey, Michael, the corner is hurt. Can you get in there and just finish out the game again? I am upset at this time because I've never sat on the sideline. And so I go out there. I am like, you know, I'm just going to play because I'm out here. I'm not going to embarrass myself. Snap the ball. I back up. The ball is in the air to my side. I jump up, intercept the ball, catches the ball, run directly out of the stadium to the locker room. Throw the ball in my bag, pack up my bag, jump in my Honda Accord, and I head out. Because I am fueled again, because I'm not understanding what is all going on. My agent gets me a sec another trip to Grand Rapids, Michigan, for the team the Des Moines, in Des Moines, Iowa. And same thing happens again. Get on the team, preseason, get released right before the season starts. And I am at this time being used, again, in the, all the marketing material. It's, you know, Allen Clemson University, you know, all these advertisements they're doing in Des Moines, Iowa, they're promoting me. I get released. So what I ended up finding out and realizing, that this is not for you, Michael. Um, at the same time, while I was doing all this playing, I was also... Uh, working part-time in architecture firm to get my, they call it intern development um, hours. And so I made it that I knew that I had my degree. I knew that football was not forever. So I needed to understand how and how I was going to do both what I love and keep this going. So what I needed to do was get my understand how I can get my hours and keep a, a starting position on the team and so I ended up getting all my hours in order to get my architecture um, to be able to sit for the architecture exam and at that time it started to hit me because all these roadblocks that are coming up uh, it was telling me that God had different plans than I had. There were some goals that I needed to pursue. There's some things that I needed to learn. And there's some things that I needed to um, get out of my system before God takes me into my next level. And the last straw 
that really took me over the edge. Even though I'm starting to hear this, I'm still fighting it because I can't believe this. I'm an athlete. And every time I, I believe this, I ended up getting a workout with a Canadian team. Uh, my agent got me a workout. We were talking over the phone at this time, you know, no, the social media was probably none. I, I don't think any of this time. So I am on the phone constantly talking with the with recruiters and the coaches and just talking back and forth about what we're going to do. And I'll set up a workout. Um, so it's like the day before the workout and I, and I don't hear from the coach and I call and say, Hey, I'm, I'm just, is going to meet me. I'm ready for my workout and I don't get a call back. Nobody calls me back. Uh, and then so I'm, I'm, I call back for with about a week or time calling back. And I ended up seeing that when the season started in Canadian, that there was already a Michael Allen on the roster, same height, same weight, same position, school. Again, now I'm still all, all this few tries in professional football have now just exploded. But God hit me and they made me think, Michael, but you got to understand a lot of these athletes that you're playing against or trying to win positions, they don't have their degrees. A lot of them don't. And you have a, it take you really, really far. And I had to really chew on that for a long time being sick that I actually stopped watching all football for about a year and a half, two years, because I saw, everybody I saw on TV, every team had a player that I played against, somebody that I played with, and I knew how those athletes were, how good they were, how bad they were. I knew everything about them. It just, I just could not watch it. That's how bad it was for me. And, and God had to tell me, Michael, you got to release it. And once I released it, everything started opening up for me. Um, I started moving up in um, my firm I was with. I, I got a permanent position with the firm and ended up learning more and more about architecture. Once I uh, started sitting for the exam, I learned more about architecture and ended up coming back to South Carolina and working with the firm and started working in sports architecture, which was a kind of combination of being able to scratch the itch of sports and really do architectural design at the same time. And through the years in the past, I came back to South Carolina in 07, uh, worked for two firms and realized that as, my, as I was growing in architecture, there were things that I knew that I could do, that I had plans for, for myself and that who God had, plans for me um, that I needed to do something different and working for firms was not the ultimate goal for me and I didn't see that for a while um, but when it started hitting me I had to realize and think about all the trials that I went through and and what it did to me to bring me to the point of uh, being able to open my own firm and I made the jump and it was one of the best decisions done because I'm able to design the type of designs I want. I'm able to choose the clients that I work with. I'm able to be the boss and be able to paint my own destiny without having people uh, um, waiting on people to make those decisions to help me reach my goals. And that brings to um, a book that I think one of the best books that's ever written, uh, The Alchemist. And if you haven't read it, it was, it's a book. And just a little bit about the book, The Alchemist, it's about a boy named Santiago. And he's on this journey. Uh, he has a dream. And in this dream, talks about a uh, treasure that he needs to go find um, the pyramids. And so he is focused on this goal that he has to get this treasure because he feels that this is a treasure for him. This is his ultimate. So on this journey that he leaves his homeland and travels and he meets these great people that put nuggets of 
of goodness in his heart. And he has all these challenges that he faced during this time. And the ultimate thing about this, it started correlating to the way I felt that my journey was. And the one thing about Santiago is that he had to realize that his life was contingent his goals. He had to understand his goals. And one of the things he learned that he, he did not anything stop him from reaching his goal. So, and this is the thing that got me, I ain't gonna lie. He actually made a decision. He fell in love with a female in here that, you know, he barely saw, but they just instantly fell in love. And he made a decision to leave her and still go after his goal. Now, we know that sometimes it's hard to let some things go, but there are also goals that you need to try to reach. And in this Alchemist book, what I learned is that if you have a goal, know what that is and go for it. Did anybody tell you any different? There are things that are so far out there that you're going to lose friends. You're going to lose loved ones because they don't understand that it's your goal. That's your goal. And to pursue it, that's what you have to do in order to have full satisfaction in your life. If I were pursue professional football, I would not be this happy in architecture right now. I do know that because I would still be thinking about it. I'll still be at the gym working out, waiting on that phone call for the next team to uh, give me that contract that everybody is else is getting. But I realized, like the alchemist, that the journey that I took helped me understand that there were things already in me and people that I needed to meet and challenges that I needed to face in order to be a good architect. And all that shaped me years of football and my architecture career. I had challenges in architecture career because uh, if you don't know, architecture is one of the um, career fields that is less than 2% African-American architects in the entire US. Now that's a low number, that's registered architects. And if you take that and you think about the state of South Carolina, there are even fewer in the state of South Carolina. And so me being in a challenging career, going through a challenging time pursuing my goal of football, now I have this new outlook on how do I face the world now. There are a lot of things that are going on now. This is 2020 and this is not the best year. Uh, for a lot of people. It's very, very challenging. Black Lives Matter, coronavirus, you know, we're doing this virtual. This is my first virtual speech. Things are different now. It's a challenge for y'all. I know that you are all some of the most brightest ever in eras of kids. So I would like to say that my age, I'm a little, I'm a little older than some of y'all, but technology was just coming around to being the spike. I mean, when I got to Clemson, um, we had got email addresses, but we did not have a, a anybody to email. So everybody on campus, you get in freshmen, you got email addresses. So you email each other every now and then just to see how the email worked. The internet was brand new. The World Wide Web is what it was when it first came out. So it was really not a, a way to go wide, World Wide Web, but it was just a tool that was starting out. But the advantages that you all have is technology is it makes the world, it makes the world just to everybody. And so in this challenging time that you have, some of the challenges that you see and be a voice, it's, it's, a, it's a challenging time to get out and go to a march or a protest. It's a challenging to do something about police brutality. It's, a, it's, a, it's all these challenges that are, 
but your technology and your minds and your bright, there are ways that you can come up with ideas to, to change, but don't forget your goals because the challenges that you're facing now, they're going to have a very big impact on where you go next. So don't let what's happening now stop you from reaching your ultimate goal because these are just challenges in your road. They're different. Yes. You're, I would say your generation is probably the, the, the generation that's going through the most with a virus, with, with economic challenges worldwide, with, uh, with environmental issues worldwide, uh, with local issues, with police brutality. There are things that are all to everybody right now, but don't let it stop you from reaching your goal. Use this you time to refocus. Use this time while you're home and you have downtime to really think about what your is, your ultimate goal you always wanted to do and go for it because you're going to meet some awesome people along the way. You're going to get through this challenge and it's going to make you even stronger than you think you are now you're going to get to that goal or you may not actually reach that goal. But once you set yourself towards that path to that goal, you're going to realize what you're ultimate, ultimately you were supposed to be doing. I challenge you to not let all this get to you. It's a lot. Yes. It's a lot going on and you just have to understand how you can get through it. So what's next? It's tough. Yeah, you can have somebody talking to you. You can have all these adults talking to you about staying focused. Uh, you you got to do this. Uh, uh, do your homework. Um, turn in your assignments. There are going to be challenges like that because you're going to have internal things that you are battling. Because again, you probably through times that you're not going to be able to see what the future can hold because there's so much going on. And if you stay on social media, it's so much on social media that's true, false. It's a lot to go on. You don't probably don't watch much TV, but social media gives you some of the same uh, information that can, can take away from your vision. You have to learn to cipher the good information and to be able to stay the course onto what you need to do to make improvements to your path, to your goal. What is it? Share it with people. Share it with your loved ones. Share it with your friends. Share it with anybody. Don't be afraid to get criticized for it because what it does is it just challenges you to make improvements to you see your vision of your goals and what you see yourself doing. When I decided to open my firm, it was nerve wracking. When I finally made the decision, it was hard. I had to think about what it looks like salary wise. That's the first thing that came to me. Like I am comfortable. I have insurance. I have a steady paycheck. I know all my bills, everything. I don't have to think about a lot of things. And when I start my own company, all that changes. And how do I stay on top of that? It's focus. So I learned that when I did finally make that jump, it was the best decision that I could have made because even though those were the, the financial side were some of the things that I worried about, there were other good things that came from it. It was, you know, my health. It was understanding I was less stressed uh, doing my own thing than working for somebody. Um, I, being able to be more in control of my destiny as a as a leader, it was it was just so much easier to navigate my career in architecture. I, I challenged myself to not let the thought of being a low number uh, in the field of architecture as an African-American uh, architect in, in the nation get to me. I know how to do this job. 
I know how to navigate the world and the career of architecture. I know how to design. Those things don't let anybody take that because because I I've been I've been through the challenges. I've taken the exams. I I passed the exams. I'm here. So that's not an issue. The issue is you, Michael. How do you take yourself to the next level? Now that you've reached one of the goals, what's your next goal? Challenges that are happening. I'm dealing some of the same challenges that are this 2020 is doing for a lot of people. Being a black man in America is tough. Being a black architect in America is tough. There are things that I think about everything that a lot of people don't think about. But what I do know is that I'm, I'm on this earth for a reason, more than architecture, more than football, but I need to stay the course because there I'm still got to learn. There are some things that I still got to give and there are some things that God still has for me. What is that? I don't know ultimately, but what I do know, like in the alchemist that I've learned is that I'm going to meet people. I'm going to have them make a big impact on my life. And I'm going to have a great time understanding what these goals look like for me. I'm ready for that. I've been through it. Now, don't get me wrong. I've been through it. So I know. And again, this is going to be hard to understand when you're going through something. And if you haven't gone through it before, it's going to be even tough to stay up. But I, again, I challenge you. I challenge you as future leaders. I challenge you as as developing your leadership skills and to understand that things that you are learning through your personal journey that you can share with others in order to help them through their journeys because they're going to have challenges you're going to have challenges and if you talk to each other then we can make this this world a better place and i i do i have confidence that your generation is a generation that's going to take us far from where we are now. Uh, we've been making improvements and there are still things that we still go through. There's a cycle going. There are some challenges in the U.S. and that, that cycles happen, you know, every, every 10 years or so, every 20 years, there's a cycle of ups and downs, economics, uh, uh, socializing, um, things that we can't control but there are things that you can do on the path to your greatness. And I challenge you to become that leader that you are. And I challenge you to stay the course because that course is going to take you somewhere that you don't know where you don't know, but you can just stay the path, keep your goal, let everybody that comes in your pathway be a learning opportunity and bad. They're going to be those challenges. So I keep you in my prayers. I keep you in my heart. And I know that your generation and you will be a change maker for us. And thank you. Ooh. Oh, my goodness. Oh, my goodness. Oh, oh, my goodness. That was so good. You guys. Ooh, I didn't know whether um, Julian to pass the offering plate. I didn't know what to do with this now. Wow, 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 wow. Like, y'all, I, I, I thank you, um, Mr. Allen. Thank you so much. Um, in the comments, they're saying that was great. So, guys, I just want to give you guys the opportunity, um, and Julian, step in whenever, um, to turn your uh, videos on and ask a question, or you can also drop it in the comments. And our host, if you can help me make sure that we're catching it. Also, on Facebook Live, feel free to um, drop a question on the, under the live. We'll make sure that we answer it here as well. So anybody have a question? Let's see. So I've got a question here. Uh, if, if, if we're waiting on Michael, Ooh. we've had this conversation in the past before. It's just about mm. for those aspiring athletes mm. that are coming along right now. They're eleventh grade, tenth grade. Um, they're, they're, you know, they in their minds they want to be the net. They want to be on the cover of, of another Madden game, but 
there's so much reality between that 10th grade year and the NFL. What would you tell them to start thinking about right now if that is their dream? I would, I would tell everyone to have a backup plan. That's, that's cliche, but it's so true. Um, you really, really need to think about what do you want to do long-term in your life? And I meet a lot of athletes that say, I want to be a businessman or a businesswoman. Be more specific than that. Because what you choose, if you're a great athlete and you get to go to university, take advantage of that and use it to get that specific degree to help you after the life of yours. Because it's going to matter Sports is going to end. You may be 40. You may be one of the legends that go through your career and retire at the age of 40. But what are you going to do for 40 until? So make sure that you have something in your back pocket to do to understand. Because I even know some athletes now that are struggling to understand what to do next. They have money. They're tr trying to do business, but it's tough. But if you know that and you have that degree or you have uh, um, you have that already, you're that's my biggest thing to say. Always have something to fall back on. All right. And so I, I was going to jump in and ask my own question, but the kids finally want to talk up. So we have a question from the group from the chat if you could go back in high school what advice would you give yourself other than what you've already given us today um that party uh don't <laughs> if you don't make it if you <laughs> all those advice because you know the thing about me in high school i have some great friends and i still love them to death and i don't even see them anymore and I would say that my decisions were very critical in my life. And so I would tell myself to separate yourself from some friends uh, um, that I would have been even better if I would have did some things. Uh, there are some, some people that I didn't need in my life should have, I should have let go. That's good. I, I can totally agree with that. Maybe sometimes I was that friend. I'm sorry to all the people, I'm sorry. I apologize. So we have another question in the chat. What are some of the projects that sport architects work on? Uh, we do a lot of work. Um, you, you pretty much you know, stadiums, arenas, uh, we do all that. And, and it's very, and I would like, I'm not saying that just be biased about sports architecture. I'm saying it because it's very specific work. If you go to a sporting event, any type of sporting event, and how it looks when you sit in your seat and see the field or the court or the track, all that is science and understanding how it's viewed, how the athletes, when they're on the field or court, how they are seeing you and the sound that it creates, all that stuff is very good and so that's a value and what we do as sports architects so we do everything sports I mean even down to recreation if it's just a softball field or something like that we do all awesome and we have another um, question in the group chat and you guys you probably I can't tell you when you will get the next opportunity to sit with someone um, who uh, play a professional football and is an architect like so make sure you ask these questions make sure that you're taking advantage of this opportunity um, so the next question is what would you say to people who are looking to start their own business I would say do it but knowing that what I know now it's a little more challenging than the American dream says uh, there are there are a lot of avenues to, to reach goal um, that, you know, you read and, and you hear about that says that this is the way to go. This is the path to take. These are the steps you need to take. But all those steps don't work for everybody. And I'll be candid that, you know, I had challenges as a black man 
um, starting my own firm. 19 years of experience. I already had some projects um, laid out that I was going to work on that were going to bring in fees, but it was still hard for me to get a business loan. Loans were hard to get. So I would say do it. But again, like my in my speech, it's going to be some challenges. And those are some challenges that I met that you have to find workarounds to get that. You, If you want that business, do it. And just know that there might not be an easy path to do it. But that's good. And someone said they're looking to run their own farm or homestead in the future. Um, so that was very helpful. Uh, one more question we have. I want to make sure that we, we're good on time right now. So is there anything, oh, I missed the question. Is there anything you did to keep yourself motiva motivated besides using your struggles you went through as fuel? That was easy. I mean, that's surrounding yourself who you surround yourself with. Um, once you get older, you're going to realize there's, just like I said, there are some people that you need to cut loose. And there are some people that you just need to distance yourself from. And there are some new people that you need to bring into your life. And those pe if I did not bring certain people into my life, uh, it would not have inspired me. I mean, being on the boards, uh, being to create uh, friendships and associates, throughout my career really helped me understand who I was and who I could be. And those people really served me well in becoming. Awesome. And then we have one last question. How did you decide that architecture was going to be your backup plan instead of something that that was directly correlated to sports. Um, for example, sports therapy, physical therapy, sports medicine, et cetera. Well, this is a hard, well, it's easy to, the generation, you probably don't remember what the Dewey Decimal System was or the card catalog. So if you do, don't raise your hand, don't show your age. But when I was making my decision, and all these coaches were coming to my house and her making her excited about I really had to make my decision and so I went to the library and just started looking at careers the library this place with book and on all these shelves um, and I went and found like four careers just based off of research that I love doing, not just because of sports, but just what I love doing. Mechanical engineering, artists, um, designing, and architecture. Those are the four that I started researching at the library and realized that architecture was the one degree that kind of had a little bit of all wrapped inside of it. And because of that, I realized that is what I wanted to do. Um, it was way before I actually got into school. Um, I really had no interest at all about staying into sports, not even coaching. Um, um, one of those things that I knew I was a great athlete and I can coach, I could coach, but I, it's not the only thing that just sparked me to do anything that stay in sports, advertising sports, nothing. Um, but so that's what it was. I, I already set in my brain that architecture was going to be the career that I wanted to pursue. Awesome, awesome. Uh, again, thank you so much, Mr. Allen. Is there any way that uh, the students, if they would like to follow you or um, just to learn more about you, is there any way that they can um, be in contact with you? Yes, I, I am on social media. I'm not that old. Um, <laughs> um, Facebook, uh, so Instagram and Twitter. Um, and I don't do a lot of posts, but when I do, when I do post something, it's meaningful. So, um, M ten out is Instagram, and you can check in the chat to see if I got that right. At M ten out yes. on Instagram, okay. And on Twitter, it's at M O at M O ten Allen.